Hi, this is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina. Thank you for joining. Take a moment, set your intentions, take a few deep breaths. Set your intentions with us. So today I had a beautiful pre-meditation just a discussion with a friend of mine, some various things going on in the world and with a friend of ours recently passing away and it seems like the the tone was a bit nostalgic and speaking about those of us who tend to respond differently through the course of the transition between life and death. So many of us here are the shamans and the death doulas and those that are that walk a, a foot in both worlds, both realms, so to speak, like earth and heaven, but also earth and underworld. So it's, you know, earth is both heaven and hell and the beyond the veil is also evidence of heaven and hell. And I think that the part that seems to want to be focused upon is presence, the power of the powerful now moment. And many people have talked about that concept ad nauseum. So I'm not going to talk specifically myself about it, I don't believe, but those are the preceding messages coming in. And I have this astrological deck. I was wanting to do a bit of a specific reading per zodiac sign for everybody, um, not necessarily feeling anything other than just the extreme flux in the world, uh, geopolitical, earthly, climate, peopling in general. I think that there's a culmination point here with the consciousness revolution that we've been speaking about. And it was talking yesterday about the powerful upsurges of emotion and how we make choices based on our emotional well-being or fears, anxieties, uh, having wounded ego, making assumptions about other like distance between a good partnership or a or a friendship, you know, at first you're on the same page, something happens or distance is created. And then one person's reaching out and the other person is falling, letting things lie. And so this can create in the one who's doing the reaching out, being more proactive in this sense of apathy and well, this person doesn't value me or this person doesn't care or doesn't like me or, um, they're selfish, some types of things like that. Sometimes, yes, there are elements of truth within all of those statements, depending on your situation, you'll have to take this with a grain of salt as always. But with others, it's like we kind of get caught up in our subjective reality where then we dismiss the nuance of that other person's experience and what they might be dealing with. And sometimes those individuals that were compelled and intuitively drawn to reach out to again and again and again, sometimes that's just the nature of the flow of that karmic pattern or that karmic soul to soul commitment is like, Perhaps you are in a better place than that person. And then your compulsion to reach out is to just kind of let them know, hey, I'm thinking about you. Or, hey, I see that you're doing your best. Something such as this. To be able to see, to hold space for. So anyways, we're pulling from this astrological deck. I don't really know what spirit would like to speak about so far. So let's go ahead and take a couple of cards first from here, and we're going to see. We were also talking quite a bit this morning about mediumship capacity, and those of us drawn to the underworld, the other world, the astral, shamanic, death in general, transition from state to state, alchemy, all of these things is kind of... Um, the shamanic alchemist is one who's here to, to be the conduit, the spiritual bridge between spirit and matter. 
and we've been talking about this at length. Yes, Pluto rebirth. Pluto is just about to go into another retrograde phase, which is not uncommon. It's quite common. I like the gyroscope that's depicted here. Pluto is such a transformative planet and rules the underworld. So there's no mistake why we're talking about the underworld, power control dilemmas and dynamics. You know, sometimes our loved ones can, in different circumstances, be addicted to a pattern. They can become hooked on drugs. They can be hooked on a bad behavior or a mental path that takes them in a certain direction. And um, there can be all kinds of issues around family dynamics in general, but friends as well. You know, there's something here about the underworld and our abilities to cope and to draw ourselves back from the pit of despair. This morning I saw a depiction of the never ending story, which came up recently about a different depiction from the never ending story before it was the, that portal where it was like, if you were not pure of heart, you didn't get to pass this, this gateway, you'd be vaporized and turned to ash on that same day. Uh, we were talking about Shiva and how from the third eye, he issues forth this electrical lightning bolt. And it's like this judgment day. And I kind of was seeing that as us having this gatekeeper guardianship task that we're here to kind of operate within and not to hold judgment, but to recognize boundaries and how they work and um, discernment. And now the depiction coming in is Atreyu, the story's hero, this young boy, and he's bringing his horse through the, I thought it was called something like the slough of despair, or it's like this swampy, mucky area, and it's meant to be depressing and meant to drag you down, and only the purest can get through there without becoming heavy and weighted down. And the further you got drawn into the sadness and the despair, the more that you sank and sank and sank. And his horse didn't make it out. And it was like the most traumatic scene from our childhood movies from my generation, one of the worst, you know, and it just was so triggering because you were really pulling for the horse. And in movies, the good guys always won everything always came through and, and bad things didn't happen to the good people. But then all of a sudden we see something terrible happen to our hero and to our familiar, our pet. And it's like, there's this definite coming of age and there's the want for something to happen and the fear and the confirmation that not everybody makes it out. Some people become eclipsed by the pain or the addiction, or the pattern, or something else. So that's not meant to be coming out as something sad, but it's something here with each of us where we've gone through some type of transformative experience ourselves, but not everybody that we care about is making the decisions or has the ability to commit fully to the soul's evolution here. And I believe we're being told that we have to allow certain things to transpire, but we also have to recognize when it is in our um, capacity to respond and react and when it's not our place to intervene, and if any, right? So let's see what's in the back here. We have Jupiter, abundance, the planet of abundance, indulgence, excess, and expansion, with Taurus, Taurus and Jupiter really love each other. That's good food, good drink, good company, cushy couches and um, lovely music, camaraderie. It says cultivate on Taurus. Cultivation of abundance through the transformation of the heaviness into something more. So yeah, it's that whole alchemical 
transformation. And here we have the moon perception. It's all, yeah, okay, so we're leading in talking about the power of the now, the transformation of spirit into matter, holding the bridge open, our ability to perceive, yes, and the mediumship. I don't know if I completed that thought. So the mediumship capacity between heaven and earth is really talking about where we give our attention. Are we so distracted sometimes and indulgent in the abundance indulgence of the abundance we've created here that sometimes that can distract our perception because also the moon tells us that if we give that powerful attention to the abundance of good times and good memories then the sadness isn't what's compounded it's the connectivity in the bond so like even if somebody has passed away we can talk about everything that they didn't do right um or we can talk about you know we had some good times remembering the best of times because it's time to help that essence to transition so even on the more mundane sense, too, it's like giving our attention more to what really matters. It's not about what things look like and about, you know, having access. It's about enjoying the simple things here and giving attention not to the appearance of being happy or the appearance of somebody getting back with us on text or hanging out with us, but it's the perception of what lies below the mask and below the the appearance of things because there's a lot to look at there's a lot to pay attention to it's like yes that's true perhaps that somebody doesn't get back to you but sometimes you can't overlook the power of planting a seed came through yesterday and I think that's what we're talking about here too is that we're not here to hold back all the time boundaries are essential but we're here to share the love. Uh, next, we have 21, beloved with Venus. That's absolutely what we're trying to talk about. It's about Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And so Venus and Jupiter, it's like expanding our love, expanding our awareness of what really truly matters and what lies below the surface of things. And maybe when we are challenged, I'm going to use that same example again about somebody not getting back to us on text. It's like maybe part of the reason that the ego gets triggered is there's the perception that let's say it's for instance that they don't like me or they don't care about me type of an idea. So we're deciding to let them go. Sometimes what we can become more more consciously aware of is our need to be well loved and well cared for and well respected and and found worthy by other and so the ego is there to protect us from from thinking those thoughts and so it sometimes will be triggered into pushing against them and creating a narrative that can seem on the surface unhealthy but it's really an attempt for us to preserve the sense of self when it's vulnerable. So, okay. So we're transforming our, our urge to take things so personally is what I'm feeling that, um, one of the four agreements is don't let things tell a story about you. People choose things because they choose them type of a thing. And we don't need to make a story about what that means about us. So, before I pull out some oracle cards, I wanted to also let you know a few of the Tao Te Ching and Art of War cards stepped forward before the reading. Under the Art of War, it says, Take time to think. How often are you alone during the course of a day and able to think through your most important decisions? Sun Tzu's advice is to give yourself time and space to think, to meditate on any serious issues that you may have at home or at work, this will not replace your instinctual thoughts, but it'll give you enough time, quiet time, in which to hear them. So I think, 
yeah, I had forgotten that was up there, but yeah, we're talking about what lies beneath. What's the motivating root cause of something? And the two Tao Te Ching messages coming out were 66 and 79. 66 reads, all streams flow to the sea because it's lower than they are. Humility gives it its power. If you want to govern the people, you must place yourself below them. If you want to lead the people, you must learn how to follow them. The master is above the people, and no one feels oppressed. She goes ahead of the people, and no one feels manipulated. The whole world is grateful to her because she competes with no one. No one can compete with her. So, something here about the the perception of the mask, um, humility versus ego. And I think that what we're talking about is in the recognition that somebody is having an ego response, do we meet them ego for ego? And sometimes I think that certain situations do demand that. Um, but I was, the way this was coming through earlier was when I said, you know, the more that you commune with a group of people, sometimes taking in music, food, or drink, um, things like music, it sets a tone. There's a vibrational resonance and all the individuals listening to that music are becoming influenced by that. And as these individuals are gathering and, um, nesting under this frequency, this predominant vibrational resonance, then their, their auras become to be attuned to each other's. And the same thing happens with proximity and also with quantity of time spent together. We start to equalize our vibrational resonance with others for better or for worse. And so when we are around another individual, the way it was coming through was that when we're around people that are good for us, you know, there's this ease, there's a relaxation of the aura, the mediumship starts to flow, the psychic impressions and intuitions are in flow, there's a trust, there's a camaraderie and an understanding and a feeling of security, safety, and hopefully non judgment all kind of going on at some level where when we're surrounded by people that may not feel or believe or act in the way that feels reliable or predictable or secure to us, then we tense up and then we start to be a little bit more strategic. What do I say? How do I say it? Because these things may be the difference between acceptance and rejection or even security and um, violence in different situations. So recognizing how to be humble with individuals that are not where we're at and how to relax our energies around those that we do want to connect with. There's definitely the ability here to perceive of what it lies below the surface in another individual. We're talking about not only perceiving that um, instinctual response to another's energy, but what lies beneath. Because we might be triggered by by something like envy or jealousy, which doesn't mean this person is spoiled or entitled, although they might be it might talk about us feeling that we don't have enough, that we um, require some other thing in our lives and it might point to something else. So we're talking about humbling ourselves to become aware of what is the, the root issue behind something here that we're talking about. 79 says failure is an opportunity. If you blame someone else, there's no end to the blame. Therefore, the master fulfills her own obligations and corrects her own mistakes. She does what she needs to do and demands nothing of others. I do notice that both of these are she's and hers in these two cards. So perhaps there's a feminine that is going through these shifts in perspective. It could be the feminine aspect of yourself, no matter your gender, or um, it can represent somebody who's setting a strong example of accountability and strong intuition where the heart and the mind are both regarded and respected. I feel that for most of us, it's going to be our own intuition bringing us 
memories and messages that if we give attention to them, if we can quiet the ego or the monkey mind, there's a series of impressions and inspirations and intuitive nudges being sent our way that that we may be feeling like, I've really got to reach out to so-and-so or, you know, this reminds me, I was going to do this and this, um, but I had this response and decided not to do it. There's an opportunity that some some of us may have opportunities to reach out to someone in a in a critical time others it's an opportunity that we are not taking because we feel on some level that previous failures mean that maybe we aren't qualified for something but what we're being told is that it's up to us to cultivate this abundance that every failure is a stepping stone to get one more leg up on a rung of the ladder, climbing up to a higher perspective where we are able to see further than, than before. Um, with Beloved, it's be easy on yourself. Do a lot of self-care with Taurus and Venus and Jupiter. Definitely about excess and qual quantity does not mean more than quality. So less friends... Uh, less outings, less food doesn't have to mean less quality. It we can eat something like an apple and be as satisfied as something like I don't know tons of sugar because the calorie density and all of that nutritional. So yeah, there may be some various health and self-care things coming through. So squirrel came through yesterday. I'm surprised that comes through again. Now we have moose underneath. Raven, shaman. I figured we'd have something about shaman here with it coming out. We I see immediately the totem poles behind depicting some ravens, crows, and are they not the emissary between life and death sometimes, the messengers? Says, you're the creator and magician. Use your gifts for good. There's power in your wisdom and in your words. Connect with the elemental spirits and glide through the void. Claim your place as keeper of the mysteries. Keeper of the mysteries, indeed. So that's that mediumship, I feel, and also reminding me of the never-ending story thing. It's like um, he was on his hero's journey. He was using his gifts, um, and he was trying to encourage the horse through the swamp. Um, yeah, and he had to, he had to kind of go, okay, there's something here that with the mediumship and the things that you're aware of and um, the insights you can glean from something, there's an enormous wisdom coming forward here. And with Pluto, it's like you're starting to really recognize and embrace your gifts, your magical gifts. And part of that is wisdom and words and your ability to be a messenger from spirit to spread hope and connectivity here. So Moose itself is all about wisdom. It says, let your head and mind reach the stars, yet keep your feet grounded on the earth. Listen to the ancient wisdom in your soul. The ancestors speak through you. You know much. And the enormous antlers here are, to me, a depiction of the connection. It's like the roots that we can grow up from the crown up into the spiritual, the co cosmic connection that we hold, developing that. So squirrel, I often see the chickadees here. Chickadees may be an important animal for you. You are the expert of hard work and hard play. Your cheerful and fun disposition is a blessing to everyone. Don't let life's distractions take you off course. Make a plan for the future, and life will give you all you need. 
So yeah, cultivate your abundance. You're prepared. You have a lot of wisdom. You're able to apply your strategy and your instinctual intuition and the gifts that you've been able to cultivate here on any level towards the creation of, of comfort, abundance, love, honor, integrity. Yeah, you're creating a much more comfortable and secure and stable existence for yourself, which tells me you may have started with unstable roots. So here we have sacral chakra coming out face up, talking about your sense of belongingness and sense of security in general throat chakra upside down so somewhat the the hidden side of your personality or the suppressed truth here with throat chakra upside down it was like our need for belonging eclipsing our ability to speak up yeah we already talked about how sometimes um how how we would um choose to speak in a group based on acceptance underneath we have Gaia and we already talked about the elementals there's definitely connecting with the elemental spirits to be able to perceive of something that needs to be spoken or something that's always been true about the self and I feel here we're talking about when we're in tune and aligned with nature here there are nature spirits and even departed spirits humans that we may have known at some point or otherwise that come through the signs and synchronicities, particularly birds and other animal totems that we might see along our path and that they each have their own magical messages coming through and we're feeling them at the gut level. There's something about the gut instincts, gut response, gut brain here, fertility. And that's all about the growth of, of a perception, I feel, or whether something uh, affirms our security and that the ride and the mystery is here to be enjoyed or whether we allow different things to say, yes, I'm a failure instead. You know, it's like, yeah, use your, your words and your mind and your inner narrative to support yourself that's part of the self-care that many of us are already aware of and there we have dynamic there's this huge transformation when there's this breakthrough understanding of how wise you are and how you've always been listening to these messages and how there's always evidence that oh, I should have done that why was I thinking that and I didn't do it you know, I knew I'd want to do that. How often do we say that to ourselves? Allowance. Yeah, it's like we have to allow ourselves to be wise in the moment instead of having a perception and then just pushing it down below the surface. We're um, letting ourselves have the foreshadowing, the foresight when our mind says, maybe I should turn there. You should probably turn there. <laughs> and um, however that is, spirit is trying to give you signposts through nature and your natural environment to prepare you for what comes next and then what comes after that. It's like when we follow the signpost, even though it seems like a detour when we're late, sometimes it's the most efficient way to get to the destination by taking the long route if we're guided to do so. It ends up being a shortcut because some something, some essence, God, source, divine, ancestors, there's this wisdom coming through that they've seen what's ahead a little bit further than us, and they give us these little bitty nuggets of insight along our path, and we're being told to listen to that. It's going to help us to grow and change in dynamic, transformative ways at a very foundational level. It's going to help us to tap into our intuitive wisdom to bring spirit into matter. Prosperity, yes, I knew that. So fertility, growing our own blessings and allowing, our, allowing ourselves to be gifted and blessed, honestly, on that level. 
So Gaia is speaking to us. We're already hearing that. A lot of us here are also earth angels and, and such. So yeah, I think we're going to get a couple more cards here. What else about sacral chakra here? We'll take that one. Fearless. That sense of belonging and, and um, authenticity and the wherewithal and the courage to be yourself versus trying to give people the answer that you think that they need because people don't trust that. All right. Frequency shift. Yes. With throat chakra, speak your truth. You're going to shift your own vibrational resonance. And we can say, yeah, I want the best for them. But if it, in our core, we have a bit of something else, the vibe isn't quite jiving with the heart and the mind, no matter what we say. And then so the point of attraction is skewed and the abundance can't come in. But when we actually are aligned heart and mind, even if we judge that as something we shouldn't feel, we can still say, you know, I... I still have mixed emotions about this situation. I know that there's this urge to feel more positive, but I can't ignore my lower emotions that are such and such and such. And when we actually are authentic about that, then we start to really repair the veil, the duality between being beside ourselves and being very powerfully centered because even when a loved one dies, sometimes we can be relieved that they're not suffering. And it's like, did I wish them to die? No, I wish them to not be in pain. So there's something about being very true, genuine, and authentic. And um, that may take shifting out of certain dynamics or group context or standing up to, or just advocating for yourself, standing up for yourself, setting those boundaries. Throat chakra is about aligning with the deeper truth and expressing that forward. Um, it resonates with Archangel Michael as well in the um, sword of truth, justice, and clarity. So what do we have for fertility? We're getting to the end of the video here. Innocence. And recognition on the bottom. Yeah, there's a, some ego mind play here. Um inner child has been using these things to just strategize but with dynamic we've got manifest coming out so manifest something more exciting more adventurous more realistic and that's like talking about moving that point of attraction into true alignment it straightens out the magnet if you will and it really draws to us what we truly are keeping in our vibrational resonance so what about the allowance of prosperity as we close out? We've got immunity and right order. So allowing ourselves to be guided appropriately to tap into our intuition helps us to, um, to immunity is about being able to sidestep and um, protect ourselves from pitfalls in right order is like doing what needs to be done. Being accountable helps us keep our abundance flowing and it helps us keep detoxing from what holds us back. So thank you guys for checking in and tuning in. We've got wisdom with that knowledge and feline here again. So take good care of yourselves. Check back in. We're going to get to some Zodiac specific readings in the next few hours here. And